it's one o'clock and time for lunch. Hi, how you doing? It's Thursday again. We're coming up to the weekend. Um, today's um, tutorial is like, you know, like last week we talked for an hour and I never really finished it. Today's is like this big. So I'm going to talk first. Okay, there was a couple of things that I wanted to show you from the shop. Um, things that I know Sarah's brought over, but just to remind you, I didn't know whether you remembered how much um, we have these flannel charm packs in. Now they're beautiful. They're a, an amazing man quilt um, because of the colour, which is all right for some men, but um, mine like it bright green. You like quite a bright one as well, don't you? Yeah, Alex likes it bright as well. Anyway, these are really cutchy, cosy, feely type. We've got this in these and in a layer cake. I'm not sure whether we've ordered some on the bowl, but if you want cutchy, cutchy, cutchy. Now, I know a lot of people are quite short in our shop. They come in and you only see the fabric, but I don't know whether you realise we've got stuff on top of the shelves. So um, I thought I'd bring some of the stuff from the top. Okay, so we, we sell a fleece. Um, I've no idea how much it is. Hang on, let me see. Come back with me. 13 .95. So we only bought the one. We bought like a quite a neutral one. Um, it feels lush. Um, it's a like a grey brown. Um, which we thought you you could use for baby quilts um, because grey is the in colour for babies. I don't, know, don't get why, but um, so we've got this one, and we thought if it sells well, then we would um, we would buy more because storage of it is is quite difficult in our little shop. Uh, but yeah, I haven't looked at it, which might be because it's on top of one of the cupboards. Another thing that goes on top of the cupboards is this oh here we go is this now this is black wadding i mean how cool is this so if you've got a quilt where you've used um dark fabrics and everything sometimes you don't want to quilt it with um a white wadding um so we bought a black one again on top of the quilt uh, on top of the cupboards you've probably never seen it so um that and I think that's fifteen ninety five, um, the same as the other one. Um, but I thought it was a really cool idea. And again, people only look as far as the liberty. Um, who's there? How are we doing? How's people's Thursdays going? Uh, we got Wendy, Jenny, Marilyn, Heather, Meg, Kate. <gasps> Meg's in the airport. Meg will be watching from. I hope you've got a pint, love. Um, so they're in the airport, they're going to Turkey. Um, so uh, they're uh, obviously through into the through the security and waiting for the plane. So that's good. Right, what else have I got? Now, I'm sure Sarah has shown you these recently, but it's just to let you know we've got a few of these in, in stock. Now this is Tana Lawn. Um, it's really thin. Uh, but it makes beautiful quilts. Now Sarah's got one hanging around here somewhere. I uh, can't see it offhand, but she's got one that she's made in Tarna Lawn. Blimey, look at all those quilts. Anyway, she's got one that's um, Tarna Lawn and she's put Minky on the back and it's um, really, you know, a touch of luxury when you're watching the telly. And we've still got quite a few of these Beau Papillon left. Um, if you like French General, these are lovely. Um, they'd be nice for the shadow quilt thing. Um, even if all you did was um, sew them in half square triangles and then just put them together, they'd make a really um, vintage looking quilt. You know, it's um, and the butterfly ones, I, I love that blue. I don't know why we didn't buy that blue in a bowl. And you can tell that my, my tutorial is going to be quite short. Um, and we've got the books. Now, going on her chanter this, this time are journal covers. Now, I know we did a journal cover, which um, never ended up on um, 
YouTube because I completely, completely cocked it up. But um, I'm rewriting the pattern. The pattern is on our site and um, I made one the other day. I've changed one of the pockets, but it works out. I should have brought it with me. It works out brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. I was so chuffed. It looks great on one of these. Okay, so that's those. Right, come, Alex, come round here. Try not to. Now, there was a lady in the shop this week. She was asking about um, what machines we use because of what we use. Now, this is Sarah's. Now, I was telling her about the buttons. Now, my but my machine, because it's a, um, a a lower model, doesn't have... This is the one that makes you, your foot go up and down. That's the one that confuses me each time. You've got your cut stitch, your up and downy needle bit. It's too many buttons. And then up here, these are the stitches. Okay. So this one is the Brother Innovus um uh, uh 1800 q so this is the quilting one so it's got a big throat and oodles of stitches and you've you can do letters with it but the 1100 and the 1300 also can um so this is this is something that um you know hopefully has shown you how the machine works and everything the next thing I'm going to show you is how to Frankenstein wadding together, which isn't something else somebody asked this week. So, come back here, Alex. Okay, before I carry on wibbling on, sorry, thought of something else then. <laughs> um, so, any comments, Alex? Uh, Rebecca said hi, just sewing my scrap squares. <gasps> Blush. Mum you... said it's the quilt on the sofa arm. The one on the sofa arm. Okay. Is in that one just there? Which one? Where? That one, the one you're holding. No. Or the one not underneath. That one. Other sofa arm. Other so ah, that sofa arm. She's got lots of sofas. Okay, so this is the Tana Lawn one. All right. Look how beautiful that is. It's just put together so well now this one's liberty um admittedly they aren't liberty but it's still a tarna lawn um and then backed in the minky okay so there's no wadding in there so it's really soft but it's warm and it makes you feel really posh when you put it on so there we go i'll tidy that later sir i promise right frankenstein in wadding Anybody else saying anything? Because I'm a um, bit... Jean said, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I only get to see what's on the website when referring to seeing oh, right. things on the shelves. <laughs> yeah, we should do one from the shop, I think. Um, take you back round the, round the shop. Because as much as we try and get everything on the website, and um, Alex spent a couple of days putting stuff on, um, it gets lost. Um or stuff comes in and we don't quite put it on. So um, maybe it's a, a time for one in the shop. Okay, right. Frankenstein and uh, wadding together. Uh, I've got two pieces of wadding and I want one that size. So what I'm going to do is you find two of your two straight edges. If you haven't got a straight edge, make one. Okay, you cut it down and make one. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to butt, butt, all right, butt. You're going to butt up your wadding together, okay? This is where the button. There we go. Right. Can you come over? Actually, to the thing. So you're going to put it on a zigzag stitch, uh, which would be that one, I think. No, let's go for that one. Okay, and you want it quite wide. Okay, so you're going to line up, 
you you're gonna line up on your on your foot you've got increments in there okay there's little lines in there and you're gonna line up your wadding that gap with that all right yes joys of uh, live tv i'm gonna why are you doing that Okay, no, go down. That's it. So you've got to try and keep your um, that gap bit in the middle. Just keep it lined up with that um, little dink in your uh, in your presser foot, like that. Oh, I'm getting a bit cocky now. Here we go. There you go, see? And now you have a piece of wadding. And if you look at some of the waddings that come through on the roll, you would also see, uh, you could probably do with a big, bigger stitch, a wider stitch, okay? Um, which is, when you look at your machine, it goes like that and gets bigger. You want that one, make that one bigger. <laughs> no idea what that's called. Um, right, onto the tutorial. What am I doing with this? How do you cope with all these wires? Okay. This is really easy. Okay, really, really easy. You're going to get your netting bag. Okay, from... Uh, this one is a lime bag. And this one's an orange bag. And I could have had a yellow one with lemons in, but I didn't know what I was going to do with the lemons. Um, I prefer lime in my... Uh, in my drinks so you're going to take your just chop off the ends where they've tied them up okay like that really easy okay so you end up this one's probably not the right one it's quite a small bag so we're gonna go with this one okay so you've got yourself some of that and you want two pieces four and a half by six okay you get your wadding and you're going to use between two and four pieces of wadding um, I'm not quite sure what size this is you want that four and a half by six it's four and a half so it's about five wide Really, it doesn't matter what size it is. Go with the size of this, okay? If you get a small one, make a small one. All right, so this will fit on there. So I'm going to cut my fabric to fit this, okay? So this is five by five. So I'm using this. This is left over from a, um, a project that I've been doing. So I'm going to cut a five by five. So any, any comments? Mm -hmm. I don't think I have to do the five by five now. Come on, sir. Yeah, mum was having a conversation in the, in the comments. Oh, right. Um, Jenny says, just sewn a pile of wadding together, still working on stockings. Ah, uh, yeah, see, for stockings or anything like that, um, the journal cover, not that you use anything in the journal cover, you know, things that, uh, table mats and things like that, it, it really doesn't matter um, if you've got Frankenstein's um, bits put together. So I'm using the corner and I'm using my ruler, the five by five. So I just line it up. It's the easiest way to do it. It's probably the most wasteful way of doing it, this um, thingy. Right. Like I 
say this is really easy. So one piece of cotton, face up. You're going to lay your um, your netting on it like that. It's probably worth it being slightly bigger. I wouldn't worry if it is slightly bigger. It's more likely to catch in the seams then. Then you're going to lay your wadding like that. And then you're going to lay your other piece of cotton face down on top of all of that. Okay, and then we're going to pin it. Now it's quite a, a fair amount. If your machine doesn't cope with this thickness, you don't need that much wadding. And it doesn't matter if you only put one or two in there. I think the whole point of these scrubbies is for it to be... You um, didn't, you didn't get the bottom one that way to pin. I didn't? No. Okay, I'm going to remove that. So you're going to want to sew all the way round, leaving a gap for turning. Okay. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to sew edge of foot all the way round okay got to remember to put it back to uh to what it should be okay so foot down you want a um a lock stitch and remember all you're going to do with these are clean dishes so I wouldn't worry too much. Now that's quite cool, the fact that the foot comes up like that. Anybody um, saying anything while I'm sewing this? Because this is not a very exciting. No, one says wadding is going to be on the outside, chambray down first. I don't know what that means. I'm sure I did it like this yesterday. You could be right though. We'll give it a go. If all else fails, I've got one I made earlier. So I'm not unpicking it. We'll cut another one if need be. Right. Okay. See? It's gone hot in here again. It was late at night and what happened was I was halfway through it and I had to go and babysit. So, uh, she's right, you know. Uh, she is right. She's always bloody right. Right, so, you're going to want to put... Your, I've written a pattern. It's about this big. You're going to put your cotton down first, then your netting, then your chambre and then your wadding, okay? And when you turn it out the right way, it looks like this. All right. So you can see there that we do the, the cotton, then the wadding, and then that. Okay. So you want to trim your um, trim your edges. Okay. So trim them down. Because you don't need all that um, netting in there. And I think you want to then touch corners like this, okay? So that you're, th there's less bulk in your corners, all right? And uh, I trimmed where the gap is, I trimmed down the wadding a little bit there so that I, it was a little bit easier to, to fold it. So you're going to want to put your um, netting into the hole, try and catch it, okay? I turned it back so I'm all, 
got no corner there. Okay. Anybody else coming out with any pearls of wisdom? Um, Linda says, of course, that's why we know her as Mrs. General Instructions. Well, this is true. This is true. There we go. You know, when you look at something, you think, that's not right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Go with your first instinct. So, this is why I keep her around. It's not like she's useful for anything else, is it? Okay, so, you've turned it out the right way. You've got it all on the right way. Remember, you're using scraps for this, okay? The only thing that um, you're just going to have to go and buy more of would be the netting. You just have to eat more oranges or drink more gin, okay? So, we're now at this point. We're now going to top stitch all the way round. So, you want your stitch there's quite a bit going on in there so i'm going to put my stitch up to 3.5 and give that a go all right now i'm going to start where my pins are purely and simply because it's easier then to take them out all right so foot down needle down uh, let's give it a couple of those it doesn't like that all right off we go. Now, you want to close the gap. I think I've given it enough. Close the gap. And you're going to go round twice. Okay, so you're going to go round on the edge. Now, it's making that noise because it doesn't like the amount of fabric and stuff going through. Because remember, as you've turned it round, you've got more wadding. You've got double the wadding in the in the edge. Now I'm going round probably about a quarter of an inch first. You're going to go all the way round. These are a really cool idea. You could make a load then for gifts. I don't know whether you do homemade gifts, but they'd be useful at least. So I'm going to come in then, um, edge of foot on the line that I've just sewn, and I'm going to go around. again and then we're pretty much done so any questions anybody uh, and says would you use a walking foot you could use a walking foot but this is working perfectly well without it um i think if you had a walking foot on there it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt i don't know whether it would get caught in the in the meshing though it's like the slippers really I wonder if that would work on the bottom slippers. There's a thought. Or whether it would be slidey. Right. There we go. Any other questions? Uh, no other questions. Come in. Okay. As usual, I've got a nest at the back. I'm useless at this bit. Okay. Now I've done lock stitches, so I'm just going to chop those off. I'm sure my dishes aren't going to mind. There we go. Ta -da! See, I told you it was a quick one compared to last week. So you've got a really snazzy, you can make them so that they fit in with your kitchen. And it is really quite... Um, quite good you know that it feels like you would um be able to scrub your um cups and things you know where it gets all that tannin on the, on the side of your teacup so uh i'm quite pleased with that i'm gonna make some more and there's one that you don't do don't do it like that okay you want the wad in there not the chambre how cool is this chambre stuff this is what we um used for the little bags and um I'm going to use that in the, one of the journal covers. 
which is quite cool. So, anybody got any pearls of wisdom or um, are they, any questions? No. Well, Sandra says you can uh, you can wash your floor as you walk. Put them on your feet. <gasps> you could, couldn't you? We could do it so that you there's a gap. Oh, I'll work on that. We we'll do floor slipper um, duster cleaner thingies. I think I like that idea. I might. I might develop that a little bit. Um, so that's it. I mean, really, 26 minutes. You can't. And I waffled like m mad to begin with. So um, check out the website. We've put some um, uh, put some kits on there. If you wanted a, a cut and press board kit, um, you just need to supply the wad in, and we'll send out. Um, the the boards and the cutting mats and things and a pattern that's on i put the pattern from the zip pouch last um last week i've called it zoom zoom zip pouch i just like all those zzz -z -z -z. um but uh zoom is another word for zip and it was like zip 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 uh, anyway you have to be in my brain to get that um, what else did we put on there? There's a couple of kits. Um, there's one at each of the slipper kits, um, full kits on the website because they came back from Hachanda. So uh, if you wanted one and you didn't get the chance to get one, they're on there. Um, what else have I put on there? Uh, there's a couple of things. Have a look. There's a couple of kits on there. Um, and the uh, pattern. And we're adding stuff every day. So um, I'm going to go and add the fleece and the wadding. Um, so if you do fancy that, then they'll be available. Um, however, they might already be on there. Um, you know how super efficient Sarah is. Um, and Alex is quite tall, so he will have seen them. Um, come and see me in the shop. I'm there. Sarah's teaching again tomorrow. So I'm there. Um, me and Linda, I don't know if Linda's in tomorrow, if not, I'm there on my own. So come and say say hello and I'll see you next week. Is Alex's button? <laughs>